of you I know, we are from Miami, Florida. We've been here. We were, we were born here. But uh, we are now in Orlando, Florida. We are in ministry. We are doing the Lord's work. But I'm so honored to stand here uh, to introduce this woman, this precious gift to the body. Uh, for us to come full circle, I cannot tell you how sweet and special this is to even be here in this place, to see this moment. Honestly, I thought that she was already a pastor. Can we say that? Already, because I watched her life and I watched the people that she sold into and she preached to and she pastored. And so this is just um, a confirmation of what God had already done many years before. But I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to stand here. And I want to introduce to you, to you guys, this woman of God. Pastor, prophetess, Tarsha with R. Pratt. touch stuff. Amen. Amen. I rolled switch tonight. I believe I was supposed to be uh, doing worship and you were supposed to be doing this part, but amen. Bless the Lord for being here anyway. Had to come from Broward and all this traffic and um, amen. I'm here. Um, it, this is an honor. Um, it's a long time coming. Amen. And I can look in her face and tell her that's a long time coming. Amen. Um, it's a very happy occasion. Um, this is a, this is self celebratory, amen. And it's also a, an ordination. It's a holy time. But just looking at her life, knowing her as, for as long as I have, and the way that I know her, um, when she just texts me, when you sing the song, she just texts me. So yeah, and the and the Lord dropped um, goodness of God in my in my in my heart for her because. Um, if every word, if a song was a person or a person was a song, this, this song would be for her. So I'm going to. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands. Hey. From the moment when I wake up Oh, until I lay my head My head down Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. Ooh, from the moment when I wake up until I lay my head. Of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. But Of the goodness of God, yo. 
your goodness is running after it's running after me i saw you saying this when you were asleep one night in maryland your goodness is running after it's running after me when you were in new york i heard you saying this your goodness is running after it's running after me on your way back home your goodness is running after it's running after me come on everybody say that say your goodness is running after it's running after me come on prophesy back over your life oh yes it is it's running after me now come on say all my life say because all my life you have been faithful yeah Woo. all my life you have been so so good every moment i am able i will sing of the goodness of of God, I will sing of the goodness of God, yeah, come on, I will sing of the goodness of God, every moment that I wake up, I will sing of the goodness of God, last time, yeah, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, sis. Those hands lifted up for me, please. This is not just a shift for elevated vision. This is not just a shift for Latarsha Yvette Pratt. This is not just a shift for Kingdom Fellowship of Churches. But everybody that's standing in the atmosphere tonight, this is your shift. This is your shift. It's pivotal. Everything that God has done in your life. Every, every place that he took you, every valley, every desert, every wilderness, every broken place, every place of isolation, every time you were lied on, every time a knife was put in your back, every time you were abandoned, led you to this place. It led you to, to this place. Why is it pivotal? Because God already sent a signal out. And he said it was time. He said it was time for you to move. Doesn't matter where you were. Doesn't matter how long you've been there. It's over. It's done. Can I show you something in the scripture? Wait a minute. I'm trying to. I got to stay in the moment. I can't do y'all protocol right now. In the scriptures, Joshua, the sixth chapter, this is for ponder. I know.
know this is for you. Lord, have mercy. This is for you. Joshua, the sixth chapter. He gave them the instructions on how many times to walk around that wall. On the seventh time, he told them to shout because the shout was a signal, not just for the people, but that shout was a signal to the elements and to the environment that they were in. That wall obeyed the signal and it became an unwall because it was time. But the, the, the prophetic and the best part of this is when the wall fell, he told them, don't worry about what I tore up. The problem with us is we can't step into the promise because we be trying to fix what God tore up. He tore the wall up because the wall became a stepping stone for them to step into the promise. If you go back and look into the scripture, he said, and step on, on top of the rubble. He said, step on top of the broken places. He says, step on top of the thing that I dismantled. So if that thing fell apart, it was for it to fall apart to become your stepping stone into your promise. You've been trying to figure out how it was going to happen. Let that thing fall apart. Don't try to fix it. And that's going to be your stepping stone into your promise. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to give honor tonight to every one of you that have stepped into your next. Every one of you who embrace this moment. It also applies to you. Who in here has a promise tonight? Who in here has God spoken some things to? Who in here have been waiting on something for an extended period of time? What, what, what is an extended period of time? That means that there was a time that was set for that thing, but it didn't happen at that time. That means that, that, means that, that, that you thought... I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. You thought there was an expiration because that thing didn't happen at that time. But anybody ever heard of an extended warranty? What's an extended warranty? That means that those benefits go beyond that time that set time, right? So for those of you who've been struggling because you thought you lost a moment, those of you who've been struggling because you thought something passed you by, mm -mm, you are in the extended, you're in the extended period now. And those benefits still apply. No, God has not forgotten you. That's not the kind of daddy he is. But it's something bigger. We we talk, we say bigger. Y'all excuse me. I'm sorry I don't go to the regular uh, way the church thing goes. But I got to do what the Lord uh, 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 told me to do tonight. Um, because we have to, I, 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 this, this is not just a church. This is, this is not just launching a service. This is not just an event. Um, um, it's time for us to speak into the, the lives of the people, the oracles of God, because it's a lot going on out here and we got work to do. And if we're despondent and if we think God has left us, then how are we going to have the strength to do it? If we're not excited, if we're not joyful, if we don't have that press in our spirit. And remember when you got saved, I remember I was, I was, I was reflecting uh, 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 on this moment and I was thinking about when I got saved. 
Remember when you first got saved and you was just happy. And when you when you came to the house of the Lord, you didn't care. Like you didn't it didn't matter how much money you had in the bank. It didn't matter if your shoes was towed up. You came and you ran into the sanctuary. I know I used to run into the house and throw my purse down and just lift my hands up. I didn't I didn't care who saw me. I didn't care what was going on. I was glad to be in the house. What happened to that joy? Huh? What happened to that? What happened to that joy in the service of the Lord? When did we become so cynical about the house? When did the house become secondary? When did ministry become secondary? When did it just become a gig? When, when did it become just the thing we put on our, our list and check it off and say, I did church? What happened? What happened? What happened? We lost sight of our father. We, we gave up on him. We gave up on him. But he never gave up. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So I'm going to ask you tonight. One thing the Lord has been pressing upon me when I stand before the people is that we come as little children. Little children don't have anything until daddy gives it to them. Little children don't know anything until he tells them. Everything, remember, we shifted. Everything you were, lay that down. And become as little children. Because, you know, little children, they never give up on their daddy. Remember, if daddy make a promise, baby, I don't care how long. If daddy say, sit there and wait on me, and when I get back, we're going to get ice cream. Where you going to find them? Their friends will go- come and try to get them to go outside and play. They ain't going. Because daddy told me to sit here because when, when he come back, we're going to get ice cream. Right? This is how we need to be. At the feet of Jesus. You know, I know we got titles and stuff. I know, I know you deep. I know you done graduated to another realm in the spirit and all that. Praise God. Uh, you know, I don't take anything away from the power of God in your life. But this is a place we don't know. We've never been here before. We don't know what we're doing. We don't. Because it's new. And he kept it from us for a reason. He didn't reveal this part of it to us. If we say it, then we lying. And the reason he did it is because he wanted us to come back to this moment. Do you not know that? Y'all can have y'all seats. I'm sorry. I know y'all been going all day, and I bless God for y'all. Do you not know that it is his good pleasure to bless you? Do we not know that it is his good pleasure that you have everything that you need? Do you not know that there is such a wealth that we have not yet tapped into? I'm not talking about money, Lord Jesus. The pursuit of money has choked purpose right up out of our lives. We run it behind money. We run it behind stuff. And we run it behind people who we think are going to get us that stuff. And it has choked purpose right up out of our lives. And we keep trying to make that thing work. He's not there. Where is he? He's in the moment. Where is he? Anybody ask, where are you, God? Right where you left him. He's faithful. (laughs) He never leaves us. He will never forsake us. Ah. So listen, I'm going to try to get through this. 
Okay? Y'all pray with me. Hallelujah. Because there is a word. Thank you, Lord. I want to encourage your hearts tonight. Hallelujah. So let me get my protocol out of the way. I want to give honor to my bishop. Y'all stand on y'all feet for this man of God. Thank you so much, Bishop, for trusting me with this assignment. Thank you, Bishop. I appreciate you. Thank you. And wait and see, Pop. We got you. Wait and see. Wait and see. Sometimes, you know, we, we need to encourage each other along the way. For real, for real. You know, not the fake church stuff. I never learned how to be fake in church, so y'all excuse me. I'm a church baby, a pew baby, grew up in church, but I never learned how to be fake. Um, people who know me, they know. I never, I never learned the fake stuff. And what I did learn, though, was that I need to appreciate everybody who makes a sacrifice. I need to, I need to appreciate everyone and not take anyone for granted because we do that in church too. You know, we, 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 we make people feel like they obligated. They're not. They're not. They're not. Whatever sacrifice they make, we got to appreciate people. I remember serving Apostle Allen in ministry, being kicked like I was a dog. I was pouring everything out, my time, my money, and was not appreciated being attacked character being attacked, being accused of wanting to take people's ministry and all I wanted to do was serve. They were trying to kill your spirit. But when you got a real walk with God, I understand to a degree the people who was talking about they got church hurt, but honey, I had hurt I had hurt, but I showed up. I had hurt, but I gave a thousand. I had hurt, but I never backed down. I never stopped coming. I never stopped serving because I wasn't serving you. I wasn't doing it for you, mighty God. I believed what he said. I believed what he said. Hallelujah. And he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Woo! Glory to God. He's faithful. He does what he says he's going to do. I am a living witness and I'm proof tonight that he is faithful. Glory to God. So I want to thank my bishop for undergirding me. You know, Bishop, Bishop is a powerful man of God. And, 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 and the reason why is because he's so humble. The humility, glory to God, that he walks in, glory to God, is why the Lord undergirds him the way he does. He is an example to us all on what kind of leader we need to be. So I give you honor, Bishop, and I thank you. I want to, y'all, I'm taking my time, okay? The givings, God bless y'all. Listen, this, 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 this is my big brother and sister right here. These are beacons in our community. They're not flashy, and it ain't a lot of bells and whistles. That's the, why, that's the reason why people don't pay them no attention. But when I tell you, if you want to model a people, who have received a mandate from God and who know how to work their square, baby, and they built their people. It ain't about building a building. They built their people and they have a beautiful ministry. That's who I want to pattern. I don't care about the lights and the, and the color and the color schemes and the, and the smoking. I don't know what else they got going on with that, that stuff that they like to do. But my big sister and my big brother, I'm grateful you're a beacon. You somebody for us to look up to. 
And I pray the blessings of the Lord on your life. Glory to God. Y'all please give them a hand. I'm almost done with the, the thank yous. I'll get to the word. The lingos. This couple right here is confirmation that I'm supposed to be standing here. Them being here is confirmation that I'm supposed to be standing here. So thank you. You counted it not robbery to get in your car and drive from Orlando to Miami to make sure to make sure that I knew that this is who I'm supposed to be. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, Apostle Allen, I have to. I have to. I have to. You are my little big brother. He called me big sis. And I'll be like, man, the way this man ministers to me, I will never forget. I'm going to tell this little bit, bit right here. I called Apostle Allen on the phone trying to sound all professional and deep. Immediately, he started speaking the tongue. Y'all know how he is. And he, <laughs> when I tell you, though, the, the Lord, sp man, you know the rest. It was the release and confirmation. These are the kind of things that I do not take lightly because people really don't speak in tongues no more. They don't really know me. You know, they, they stand way back there and they try to figure me out. And that's okay. But they'll, they don't get it right because they think I'm one thing when I'm really another. But the Lord gave it to you. And also, right before I came home, didn't know I was, you know, it was you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had to cry. He was like, I know that cry. Go ahead and cry, big sis. He was in the middle of getting ready to go and preach. And I was like, I got to get off the phone. You know, I'm a big cry baby. I got to get off this phone. And uh, he was like, mm -mm. I said, but you get ready. He's like, I'm going to be right here until it lifts. All right, let's go to the word. Okay, I done cried enough. Let's go. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on. All right, let's go. Um, can y'all go with me to Haggai, the second chapter? I love all of y'all. Y'all know that, right? Okay. Thank you, Lord. While y'all getting that, let's thank God for our uh, media guy. Marcus Fowler, TNZ Media. Marcus has been nominated for Photographer of the Year. And um, before it's all over, we're going to get that um, website for the people to vote for you because we want to make sure that happens, right? So let's make sure if you don't have him um, as a Facebook friend, please find him on Facebook. That's Marcus Fowler. And uh, we'll get that website up because um, we want to make sure he becomes. We got to celebrate our own. Um, I, the reason I'm calling um, Marcus's name as well um, is because he rearranged. He, he has a business. He's an entrepreneur. And he rearranged his entire schedule to be here tonight. We got him. We got him. It's got him. He, he didn't have to do that. He didn't, he didn't have to do that. So thank you for your sacrifice. I said Haggai 2. I'm going to read. I only have one contact in, so pray with me. I'm going to read the fourth from the... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I told y'all I'm not fake. Um, all right. Okay, here we go. Haggai 2. I'm going to start reading at the fourth. But now be courageous, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be courageous. I'm reading in Amplified. Be courageous also, Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. And be courageous again. That's two. 
All you people of the land declares the Lord and what? Work. Uh huh. For I am with you. Uh huh. And work. For I am with you. I'm going to say it again. And work. For I am with you, declares the Lord of hosts. Okay. As for the promise which I made with you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit stands firm and immovable and continues with you. Do not fear. Okay. For thus said the Lord of hosts once more in a little while, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and they will come with the des desirable and precious things of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory and splendor, says the Lord of hosts. I'm going to read one more and then we're going to get into it. One more. Yes. That's Nehemiah 6 very familiar scripture all right nehemiah 6 when word came to samballat tobiah jeshem the arab and the rest of our enemies that i had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it though up to that time i had not set the doors in the gates it was almost done samballat and jeshem sent me a message. <laughs> Come let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were, oh no, mm -hmm. but they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messages, y'all better hear the word. So I sent messages to them with this reply. I'm carrying on a great project. Y'all know I'm doing a great work, King James. And it cannot go down. Why should the work stop? Somebody say that. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Okay, four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same. Um, and I want to take the thought tonight from, uh, what verse is that? The ninth verse where he says, Lord, strengthen my hands. That's what we'll be talking about tonight. Lord. Mm -hmm. strengthen my hands all right how are we going to do this i'm always concerned about the approach right point of entry is important when we're trying to get a certain release okay so when i was meditating on this what we gonna do um we went to haggai he said okay i'm with you i want y'all to get to work because i'm with you yes i know you went through some things yes i know there's been trauma we've experienced some um um some things we have never seen in our lifetime especially in the last couple of weeks right we've learned we've lost a lot of people we've seen scandal in the house there's a lot going on it was a lot torn up a lot of the stuff that was set in place is not set in place anymore, and we were not ready for that. A lot of things that we thought was going to be there forever, a lot of people that we thought was going to be there forever are no longer here. So now what we going to do? So in Haggai, the Lord said, okay, don't worry about it. I got you. I'm here. What I want you to do is get up and start working again, right? Now we're in Nehemiah. But I want to go to John 9. I know, Marcus, I didn't give you this because I'm not going to read it. I see you. Um, but I want to go to John 9. <laughs> I want to go to John 9 for your reference. And I want to go uh, follow the example of Jesus, okay? He said, I must work the work of him that sent me. We talking about working tonight. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day because night is coming and no man can work so let's talk about jesus and the work uh, jesus was working in a hostile environment amen mm -hmm. uh, if you read uh in the eighth chapter leading up to you will see um, that when we get to that part in the ninth verse, he actually had just come through uh, um, a, 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 a verbal assault from the Pharisees um, trying to trick him up because, you know, they was always trying him 
and to always trying to challenge him and who he was and and um is is he supposed to be doing what he's supposed to be doing you know anybody in here experience the people say you are not supposed to be serving in that capacity the people say um you're not called to do this and they said that because of what your life was um before then how could god use you in this manner or because they don't know where you come from who is this who is this person you know we don't know your pedigree we don't know where you come from you wasn't in the usual clique where did you come from you just came out the blue who is this girl who is this latarsha pratt we don't know her she didn't run with us she was not in the streets or for the streets she wasn't in a church clique either where did she come from mighty god so they were always challenging jesus but jesus stayed focused on the work why, why am I bringing that up? Because a lot of times we get too caught up in what people are saying. We get too caught up in people talking about who we are or who we think we are. And it, we get distracted from the work. And, and, and then our work becomes making folk alive instead of just leaving it to him, right? So we don't want our work to become making people alive so here go jesus he's in a hostile environment right he just got tried then he walks up on um the blind man right and then and then here go the people well we like the tea all we want is the gossip how did he become blind was his mama fault or his daddy fault right and jesus checked everybody and said N none of that it don't matter does that matter it, 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 it's a purpose. It's a, the reason he's blind is because you, so you should can know that I am caught. See, remember, the folk was challenging who he was, right? The folk was challenging who he was. So here's the opportunity for God to show himself as who he was, that he was qualified to do what he was doing. So I'm not concerned about how we got here. We're not even concerned about the why of why we're here. here. We just know that it is time to work, right? So let's, that, now we're going back to Nehemiah. Nehemiah, here they go. The Bible says that they were building a wall. Hmm? And then... They were almost done with the building of the wall. Huh. The work was almost done. And so here comes the enemy. Anybody else been there? You've been there? You've been there almost done, right? Here comes the enemy. And the, the pretense was, let's go fellowship. Listen, I want to come in fellowship. Anybody ever had that conversation? Amen. God bless. I see what the Lord is doing in your life. I want to invite you over here. Let's go fellowship. Nobody ain't coming bringing no money. They ain't bringing no materials. They ain't ask how they can help. They got a congregation and won't come, won't bring their congregation. They going to come because they want to be nosy, but they don't bring their people to assist in the work, in the building. Let's watch it, the earmark. So they said, we want to come and fellowship. He said, nope. He said, because they were trying to harm me. He had the insight. Remember, they were trying to harm me. So I sent my messengers and said, nope, I'm, I'm doing a great work and I can't come down four times. I need, um, let's rest right there. Four times. The enemy does not care. He's relentless. Why? Because he know what the end is going to be. He's trying to stop it. Before the thing gets done. And so I'm here to declare to you tonight. Is to give the same response. The, the issue with us is, is we try. We, we trying to be friends. We want to be friends. We care too much about what people have to say. We trying to make connections. And we trying to network. Because we trying to get to that next platform because we want that next door to swing open because we think that's how it's going to be made to happen no what is your mandate what is your assignment
get to work. Focus on the work. He said, no, I'm not coming down. Mm -mm. My work can't stop. The work is too important. The labor is too important. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful about these people, these lazy people, because those are the ones who are trying to get you off track. They ain't doing nothing. It's the ones who ain't doing nothing. They're pretending to do something, but it's the ones who ain't doing nothing that try to get you to stop the work. It's those idle folk. Idle folk get on my nerves because they're the ones who avoid work. They go out of their way to avoid work. It's not, it's not that it's one thing to be inactive. You could be paralyzed or you're not able to, but it's another when you idle. That means you avoid work. You see work over there and you run over there. That's what an idle person does. And those are the ones that are trying to lure you away from the mandate. So when that didn't work, they tried another tactic. Go and read the scripture. When that didn't work, they tried another tactic. The Bible says, watch this now. This is how bold the enemy is. He said, okay, since you're not going to come and meet me here, what I'm going to do, he made the, uh, <laughs> he made the announcement. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lie out. I'm going to tell a lie. And I'm going to tell the people that y'all are over here um, trying to uh, uh, um, um, overthrow the king. I, I'm, I'm going to tell a lie. I'm going to put a lie out on you. And I'm going to say that you're trying to overthrow. You're trying to take over my ministry. I'm going to put a lie out. And tell, the, and tell the people, you're trying to take my members. I'm going to put a lie out and tell the people that you are trying to take over. Why did he do that? Psychological warfare. When the enemy can't get you one way, the next thing he does is go for your mental. He goes after your mental. He goes after your emotions. He starts trying to push your buttons. Because remember, why? when you think about it, why didn't he just come in physically? Why didn't they just come in physically and stop the work? Because the scripture says that Nehemiah was closely guarded. They couldn't get in physically because he was closely guarded. That's the reason why they sent the, in, the first invitation. Because he, they could not penetrate the people that was watching Nehemiah's back. Anybody in here got somebody like that watching your back? That the enemy can't come in there with the foolishness? That if they come and try to do anything, they will flip them on their head? Anybody got anybody like that in their corner? Them people knew not to come trying to storm that wall because they was closely guarded. Huh? They couldn't get in because he was protected. He was in the center of the will of God. Because I heard my grandmama say the safest place is in the will of God. So they tried. So what he tried to do now, I'm going to push your buttons and make you come out. Since I couldn't come in there where you are, I got to make you come out from amongst the place of safety. And this is where we have to be careful, men and women of God, because too, I, I know it's a lot of assa character assassination going on because that's the last ditch effort of the enemy. The last thing he gonna try to do is tear down your character. But you gotta stand and be focused because let me tell you something. Um, it, it, it's too many things um, of him trying to push our buttons, trying to cause us to run out, to run, who, running after a lie. We're running behind lies, and you're trying to put out fires. Mm -mm, mm -mm, uh -uh. The Lord gave me a, a mandate. He said, offer no defense and give no excuse. If they're going to lie, let them lie. Let them say whatever they're going to say. Um, we got to be careful about that pride thing. That's my reputation. The Bible says we are led like sheep to the slaughter. For this cause, we are killed. Huh? That's your uh, character. 
That's your name. That's your rep. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the day long. Let let them say it. Let them kill your name. Let them kill what's going to happen. You're going to be resurrected. The word that they speak is going to ensnare them. Let's try God. If you've been lied on, try God. If you've been lied on, just try it. Don't answer it. Don't respond. Don't pick up no phone. Don't call nobody. The people who even rebuke the ones that's bringing you to lie. What you coming here for with that foolishness? If y'all was talking about it, y'all keep it over there. Don't bring it over here where I am. Don't entertain it. You know it's a lie. Everybody else going to know it too. Do not respond to the lie. Because it only comes to get you off track. It only comes to distract you. Now, remember, how many sleepless nights have you had over somebody lying on you? Let's tell the truth. How many times did you walk the floor crying out to God, but Lord, you know I'm doing this, and Lord, you know I'm faithful, and Lord, you know I ain't out here doing nothing, and Lord, you know, right? All that, you could have been sleeping. You could have been resting, worrying about what them people said. But watch out for pride, baby, because that's the reason we be running after a lie. Put your pride on the altar. Put your pride on the altar. Because who, who in here knows that the last ditch effort is character assassination, where your character has been assassinated properly? That's the stepping stone <laughs> to elevation. If they ain't doing it right, that's probably, maybe the re that's the reason you haven't been elevated because they ain't do it right. But when you have been lied on properly, when your character has been assassinated properly, uh-huh, because you know why? Why is it necessary? Let me help you with something. Let me, let me tell you how practical God is. You got to know before you go who is actually in your corner. Now, if somebody don't put out a lie and folk are running with it, it's good for you to know who's running with the lie. Right? Let's stop fooling ourselves about people who we think love us because they don't. And if you're doing what you're supposed to do, everybody not going to love you, baby. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, it's going to be a problem. When you come in the door, oh, there she go. Uh-huh. Yeah, here I am. That's right. You know what I'm coming with. It's a problem. So, yes, God would allow it. You got to know. Let's grow up in here. You got to know who's in your corner. Do you not know that he would not tell you, I'm going to take you way over there and I'm going to set you up like this. But you can't have nobody listen who's not in your corner. Y'all ain't going to keep that. You got to know who's in your corner. It's important. Do you not understand this? It is important not only for you to be anointed for the cause. It's not only uh, uh, important for you to be dedicated, but the people that are with you, the people that are walking with you have to have the same heart. They have to have the same mind. They have to have the same concern concerning the work. They have to say, have the same conversation concerning the work. They got to bring the, their resources concerning the work. Their, 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 their heart has to be concerning the work. You got to know who that is. Who's working among you? Who's working among you? Because th how did they get this far? Because they were on one accord. Everybody that came and connected to themselves, they had the work at heart. All of their conversations, watch the conversation. What is it about? All their conversation was about the work. When they spent their money, it was about the work. When they made plans, it was about the work. When they set their schedule, they made time for the work. Right? Those are the kind of people Nehemiah had around them. So, of course, the enemy going to get mad. So now I want you to come out and I want you to address this lie. He was like, y'all can go ahead and tell a lie all y'all want to. I'm not going out there. Not coming out there. Say what you want to say. 
Do what you want to do. That's what you got to tell the people. Hallelujah. Say whatever you want to say. Character assassination. Say whatever you want to say. Yes. Because what happens is at the end of the day, God will turn that thing around. Uh, that's what a table look like when it's turning. What does that mean? When I was sitting on that side, when he flipped that table, I'm at the head now. He turned that thing around. And every liar gets exposed when the tables are turned. Every liar gets exposed. Every, every uh, um, uh, um, a device of the enemy gets uncovered when he turns that table. So let's not worry about that. And let's do what Nehemiah did, right? He went on to say, okay, after all of the foolishness, he was like, all right, I'm not paying y'all no attention. Don't bring me no more messages. I don't want to hear no more from them people. He turned his face to God and he began to pray. I'm about done. Lord, this is where we are. Strengthen my hands. I got a mandate and I need you to strengthen my hands. I have an assignment. I got an assignment, but I can't do it without you. You promised that you would be with me. You said you'd never leave me, nor forsake me. And this thing that you've given me is much bigger than I am. I need you to strengthen my hands. I know it looked like I ain't got enough people, but you said you was with me. Remember in Haggai, he said, I'm going to flip the earth upside down. He said, the gold and the silver belong to me. He said, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. You ain't got to worry about resources. You ain't got to worry about money. You ain't got to worry about people. You ain't got to worry about checks. You ain't got to run behind platforms. I said, I'm going to be with you. I'm with you. Do you know not, not know how it grieves God? That when we make plans concerning this assignment, we're talking about if I could just connect with so-and-so. He just told you, I'm, a, I'm with you. He told you before that animal, before they lied, before they walked away, he told you before your challenge, before your trial, before your storm, he said, ah, I'm with you. And I got everything you need. Go back and look at Haggai too. It'll bless you. He spelled it out for them. They were sitting there crying. You know, just came out looking and feeling all bad about their past. He said, all right, come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. I know. But we passed that now. What I need you to do now is to remember who you are. What I need you to do now is remember who I called you to be. Remember, he called them by their name, Zerubbabel. <laughs> Get up. What I want you to do is remember what I said before it happened. I don't change. I didn't change it. I'm not saying nothing different. I just want to remind you that we've got work to do. And I'm going to shake. Listen, the heavens and the earth. Do you not understand what that means? The environment, atoms, neutrons, protons respond to the voice of God. He said, if I call it up out the sea, it's coming. If I call it up out the valley, it's coming. It belongs to me. The Bible says that the earth cannot resist the voice of the Lord. That means that it responds. When he said, I'm making a way out of no way, literally, literally, that's what he does. He ain't us. He's God. You remember who you serve? Do you remember who he is? Stop measuring him against people who have failed you. Stop equating God with people.
people who let you down. Stop equating God with people who forsook you and people who betrayed you. That's not God. That's not how he sees you. That's not what he's looking at when he look at you. He put something on you. He identifies you by what he put on you. Get up. Get up and get to work. Get up. Get to work. We got work to do. People out here dying, literally dying. Where are we? That's a shame. Get up. We say we serve an all-powerful God. All-powerful God. What happened? When I grew up in church, I saw miracles, signs, and wonders. The church I grew up in, they ain't have smoke, colors, and all that other stuff. But they had some praying. <laughs> Ooh, I saw Shekinah, literal Shekinah in the house. I literally saw angels in the house. Glory to God. That atmosphere was how I received the Holy Ghost at 10 years old. Real. It wasn't fake. It wasn't this pretend stuff. That's, I, that's why I know when it's fake, Apostle. I've known him since I was 10. I know what she kind of feel like. I know what she kind of look like. This is a God who can do anything. And guess what? It ain't even y'all be saying it's according to y'all faith. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It's according to what he said he was going to do. Even your lack of faith ain't going to stop him from being God. Don't listen to the lie. That don't stop him from being God. When did we stop putting a demand on him? Get up. Oh, Shanda. Get up and get to work. I don't care about who said you weren't qualified, baby. Get up. Because this ain't you anyway. It's him. How did this happen? How did we get here? It's because he said it. If I give you my personal testimony, it will flip you upside down. I don't have time tonight. But I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Get up. And when you, listen, Pastor Ron, I know. When you work in your square, sometimes it feels like you're doing it all by yourself. But that's the moment when you declare Lord, strengthen my hands. It might feel like it's just you. Remember, he said, I'm with you. <laughs> Woo! He said, I'm with you. So even in that moment, see, this is a simple prayer. Ain't no robo-ta-ta-ta-ta attached to this one. Strengthen my hands. I get discouraged. I do. But what happened? I'm going to lift it up. And what am I going to say? What am I going to declare? I'm going to pray. You know, when, when I say, Lord, strengthen my hand, you know what, that, what I'm saying? I need you, God. I can't do this without you, Lord. If you don't help me, I won't be helped. If you don't strengthen me, I can't go. Strengthen my hand. Lord, strip my hands. Can I tell y'all the strategy the Lord showed me? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I show y'all and, and I'll be out your way. Um, Ponda, since you standing, can you come over here and help me with this? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pastor Ron, can you help me with this demonstration? Can somebody move that out of the way? Because I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. And I'll be done. I'll be done. I'll be done. I'll be done. Pastor Ron. Pastor Ponder, I need one more man. I need another man. One more man. Come on. Now, for this, listen, he gave us instruction. I'm going to tell you what he's what he talking about. 
Okay. We've shifted. We're in another place. It's about kingdom, right? We've got to focus on the agenda. Kingdom. What's the main thing, the, the ground level principle for kingdom is that we are a part of something that is bigger than ourselves and that whatever we do in this time, we're not going to be able to do it by ourselves. We're going to need to. Can y'all link y'all? Yeah, we're going to need to do that right there. Um, it doesn't matter that you're not in the same affirmation. What is it? Is it affirmation? I don't know what it is. Afro, I don't know. Y'all ain't from the same clique. Y'all ain't from the same group. Y'all not from the same fellowship, right? But we're kingdom. Right. Second Kings 4 speaks of a woman, a widow, right, who went to the, who went to the prophet and said, I'm struggling. We struggling? She said, I'm struggling, and I don't know how I'm going to make this work. I don't know how I'm going to get this done right? He said, uh, what do you have? She said, all I got is a vessel with oil. Mm -hmm. Vessel with oil. Vessel with oil. Vessel with oil. Okay. Then he gave him some more instructions, right? He said, now, as long as you have, watch this, she had a vessel with oil. <laughs> Filled with oil. He said, but in order to keep this oil flowing, you need to go get vessels. Come around here. Come over here. Empty ones. Right here. Come on. That don't mean that women are, are less. I'm not saying that. I'm a woman, okay? Link up. I need one more woman. I need one more. I need another woman. Let's go. Come on. Glory to God. Yes. Come on over here. In order for the oil to continue to flow, Overseer Ponder, it ain't going to come out your house, Overseer Ponder. Where it's coming from, Overseer Ponder, he said, go to your neighbor and get an empty vessel. Ah, go to your neighbor and get an empty vessel. Go to your neighbor. And I know this is not what we're taught. Amen? You got to keep it on. No, no. no, we're talking about kingdom. And in order for you to keep the oil flowing, you got to keep pouring into empty vessels. So what God is doing, if you're suffering loss, it's because he is enlarging and making room for this oil to continue to flow. Because as long as you got an empty vessel, the oil is going to flow. As long as you got an empty vessel, what am I saying? Somebody's still looking confused. We are full in fat. Go back to Haggai. What he said. Y'all living in sealed houses. Y'all comfortable. When you get full in fat, you comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you don't feel like working. You get the itis, right? You don't feel like working. You don't feel like doing, you don't feel like doing anything when you're full. But if I get some empty vessels, if you keep emptying out, if you're suffering loss, if you've suffered loss, anybody about lost something, you don't lost things, you don't lost relationships, you don't lost people, that's God. You got to rejoice. Dry your eyes. You got to rejoice because that's God making room for the overflow. And uh, he's giving you the capacity to manage the overflow. You couldn't do that with them folk around you. And guess what? Your neighbor's vessels are necessary because they got something you don't have. Because that's kingdom, right? We're all a piece in the puzzle. My piece don't work without your piece. 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 And don't work without your piece. It ain't in your house. It's in his house. We are limiting ourselves. That's the reason there's lack. Because we won't go outside the house. Your neighbor got something you need. For all of those folk who think that it's only with you, you know, they say more saved than everybody else. And uh, y'all holy and everybody. Okay, you keep on. But y'all going to continue to be in lack. Because that one across the street got something you need to continue. All right, thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Stand on your feet, everybody. And lift that hand. I want you to lift that right hand and say, Lord, uh, Apostle Ellen, can you come here just a moment and strengthen my hand? Lift that right hand your shaya, your right hand, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, for a long time, sir. I know. For a long time. And a lot. Mm. Pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Pouring out. Pouring out. But I hear the Lord say, rest. And receive. It's hard, I know. But it's time for you to receive. He's sending literally, I promise you, in a couple days. Listen to what I'm telling you. In a couple days. In a couple days. Bishop Williams, can you come here and just lay hands, hallelujah, in the bosom? Is he overseer ponder? In a couple days, sir, that thing right here. In a couple days. Ooh. Lay your hands. Apostle, listen, it has been as hard as it's been, it has been because of what God has been doing for you. I know it's been hard. I know it's been a long time. I know God has brought you back to this place. Ah! I need you to hold hands together. It has been as hard as it has been. 
Hallelujah. Miriam, glory to God. Come and sing something sweet. Hallelujah. Whatever your concern was, whatever your fear was, do not leave this atmosphere. Because it don't belong to you. If you don't remember anything else that was said tonight, remember when it gets hard, when it gets tight. Lift your right hand up and say, Lord, Strengthen my hand. Blessings. I will do Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight as we leave this place, we're gonna be your presence. Give us travel and grace and travel and mercy. Shield and protect us from the hand of the enemy. Keep us from all harm and oh, danger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hug somebody, I tell them you love them, and consider yourself dismissed. Just to see you.